Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to today's edition of Tony Paints a Picture For You. Um, thanks for thanks for being here. As you can see, I'm just in uh, I'm just underneath the atrium outside the garden in the castle grounds, and there's a the moat's just down there, just hanging out, you know. And um, yeah, cool. <laughs> there you go. Let me know if you can hear me okay. I've got a new mic configuration today. Um, and I'm a little bit further away from it. So it might sound a bit funny now. But yeah, let me know if it's all okay. Who have we got here? Who's who's here? Who's painting along? Who's just having a watch? Who's just being thoroughly entertained by the whole shebang? Got to have coffee. The coffee doesn't play well with my green screen. It's a bit too green. I wonder what will happen if I hold up my scissors, which have a green handle. See? Ooh, disappears. Wow. Isn't it weird? It's cool. Say hello to me, everybody. Say hello. G'day, Dave. How you going, mate? <clears throat> it's all happening here today. I uh, almost did myself out of time. Bit of an echo, yeah, it, it'll be better when I'm over there painting a bit closer to it. But you can still hear me, that's good. Yeah, my um, my radio mic, my lapel mic that I normally use, and it looks like I'm out of sync, am I out of sync? Probably. Why not? Why not make everything else go to shit too, hey, 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 hey? Let's have a look, mic delay. Let's put about three or four. Let's try that. Uh, hopefully that'll be better. <clears throat> but um, yeah, my lapel mic just died in the ass. I don't know why. Just died, upped and died on me. So I'm using a, um, it's actually a better microphone, um, the condenser mic, but it's uh, all good. Jacqueline, how you going? Good to see you there. From Bermagui. I've been to Bermagui. I've been there and um, it was when my wife and I were um, on a road trip when we lived in Newcastle. We went down the road trip to the south coast and checked out Tilbury and all those kind of places. Guinevere, how'd you go the other night? That was fun, eh? Okay. Okay, all good. So let's have a look at the picture I'm gonna paint. So I put two pictures up in the little things. Tammy, how you going? How are you? I hope everyone is doing swimmingly today. I did put two pictures up, but I chose one to do today for this this demo. Should I take about an hour or so? Something like that. But um, it's an interesting composition. So, you know, we'll get uh, stuck in. Yeah, going to be I painted like rubbish, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was a uh, it was a bit of fun. It's hard trying to hold like a normal conversation and paint at the same time, but that's okay. It's good. So let's have a look. We're gonna do this one. Yay! Look at that. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's a beautiful picture. And uh, there's a few little traps though. And I've deliberately, this was part of a, for some reason, uh, it's a royalty free photo thing, but for some reason photographers have this, or some photographers have this thing of putting everything right in the middle. Um, yeah, it was great fun, right in the middle. So I've just cropped it up so it's a bit of a tunnel. I'll make a little bit less of this uh, outside um, foliage and thing, but I do want to get that tunnel look. So I'm going to move the uh, move the, the picture here. So give me a second. Just go over this bit. I'll 
able to fix that up in a sec because it's it's a bit wonky, but that's all right. We'll get there. Got me a bit of paper ready. I just haven't got it taped down. But no, all good. So if you're painting along, take this opportunity to um, to tape your board down, tape your paper down to your board and all that. And uh, I'll shove over and it's probably find the sound will get a little bit, a little bit better now because I'm closer to the mic. Might be too loud. I need you guys to tell me these things because I don't know. All I can hear is just the room. So, all right, tape down roughly parallel, roughly straight. Everything's roughly for me. Don't worry about. Don't worry about being too pedantic. Got to fly. Oh, great. Do, do, do. All right. Looking good. Just need to straighten up the old Cameroon. The Cameroon. Yeah, that should, that should do us pretty good. All right, so what's been happening? What's going on in your lives? Talk to me. Okay. <sighs> Let's draw this up. Let's go drawy drawies. Now, find the, you know, by all means, just grab the horizon line, wherever you want to put it. But I'm going to sort of put it where it is, about a third of the way up. Um, sort of where the base of the building kind of sits out there Just think of these like blocks don't don't think of them as as big fancy buildings or anything like that yet. We'll put a, a few little bits in later on that'll tell that story for us. Mm. And we do need to get our sort of perspectives right as far as, um, you know, these all, all these sort of things have to be parallel. All these lines sort of parallel to each other. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, a bit of a chimney that goes up a bit further. So nothing too, <clears throat> nothing too major here. We're just getting a few things. But if you have a look at all the the lines, so we got that line, that line, that angle, that angle. They're all parallel. As long as it tells a story of it being a castle by the end of it, I'm happy. <clears throat> COVID numbers up, eh? Wow. Jeez. All happening. Now I'm just going to make that a little bit taller. So I think I'll just shorten it up a bit, which is... Not what I wanted, but that's okay. We're all good. Uh, we want to do this um, this little gate, and you got to have a look. So it'll be parallel. So you know, like have a look. It'll be parallel to the tops of those chimneys, approximately. You don't have to get your your friggin' protra protractors out and all that, but you know, just have a rough idea that kind of stops there but I'll carry it over I 
I'm actually just going to re um, drop that horizon line a tiny bit. That's cool. Oh, good. fix that up before people freak out all right so i don't really want much more detail than that in the in the building uh tammy um just a mechanical pencil to 0.7 of a millimeter thickness uh it's 2b lead um but yeah nothing special uh, I, I don't worry about pencil showing through. It's all part of the process. Um, some people get really funny about it. Uh, most of the time, if you work heavy enough, then, um, most of the time it, it washes out and you can't see much of it, but, um, but nah, it doesn't matter. It's all part of the painting. It's part of the piece of art we're, we're creating. So if you do sort of get worried about that stuff, I mean, that's fine. I mean, to each their own, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend getting worried about it at all in fact sometimes it can be used to deliberately show through like in little windows and things like that like i'm not uh i can't see the reference photo close up or anything like that and that's cool that's good because i'm just interpreting what i think is there and that that's good i like that way of working um takes pressure off <laughs> so roughly about there is our horizon trees i'll show you a way to do these big masses of trees and things without it being stultifyingly dull usually i mean it can be really easily turned into something that's just so heavy and boring um, but i'll show you a couple of different ways that we can do them so it's not like that <clears throat> so i'm just putting some you know little shapes in there that'll guide me later on that's all no biggie so if you're painting along i'll just give you a chance to catch up there okay we are all good. All right. All right. Well, let's do it. Let's do it, huh? Okay. So, <clears throat> I'm using uh, <clears throat> some rough paper today, as usual. Um, it's the Bao Hong rough. I like this paper for things like this where you want to have a lot of abstraction. Ah, okay, James, how you going, mate? Good to see you practicing so much. I love it, love it, love it. Um, yeah, and we just want to, um, this Baohong paper's got, it's really good for letting, um, doing some new effects because it stays wet for so long um, so that you can just mess with it for ages and it doesn't get all muddy. Okay. So I'm just going to give it a bit of a spray. We're going to start this with an initial wash. You know, just a really light wash, to be honest. Um, not much at all. So nice and warm, but subtle, really subtle. Like bugger all there. Bit of burnt sienna, a bit of raw sienna, sorry. Just something like that. But that's it. There's not much in the way of uh 
not much in the way of sky because we want that light that glaring light to come through so you don't want to detract from that so just a bit of warmth is all that's really called for um I'm just gonna smooth that out down to there and the front of these buildings the bit the parts that are in the light are um pretty important of course but i don't want to make too much of it just something like that leave a bit of dry brush and gives us some nice effect anyway you can cover it all up because it's uh it will um you'll be covering these darker bits up anyway so it's fine I like that sort of yellowiness. It's a good word, that one. Um, of this hill and the shadows and the soft shadows that come across it. I like that. So I'm just going to try and capture that. As it comes down here, it gets quite warm. See, warmth underneath is always good when you, your end vision is going to have some nice cool shadows. So, should be cool. Like, as in good. But a bit of water, just a bit of stuff. People hate it when I say things like that, just a bit of stuff. But it's really all it is. It's how, you, it's how you've got to think about it. Our main objective on this bit is to get some warmth on there so that it's going to uh, co-mingle beautifully with our, um, with our cool shadows that come over later on. So that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. While this is all still wet up here, even though we're not painting the trees yet, I'll do that later on. Um, I want to get some of the warmth in there as well, just some of that stuff that'll glow a bit on the outside. Um, so I'm literally just putting bits so we can get some nice soft edges on and stuff as well. Not that much, I want it to be red as such. But just little bits of warmth and we'll do, and that'll serve as kind of the same sort of purpose as the warmth down here, that underneath wash. And uh, we can do a lot of stuff with that when it comes time to paint the whole damn thing. But yeah, that's all we want. <clears throat> right, happy as Larry. There we go. Good, 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 good. Now, just sort of having a look to see if there's anything else that I can do while it is still damp. Um, yeah, not really. It's fine. No, all good. So, hair dry. I'm just going to mute the microphone so you don't have to listen to this.
Alrighty. So, as you can kind of see, I'll just move that back there. Um, it's dried off a lot lighter. It's all it's all warm, which is exactly what I was after. So, I'm just waiting for it to cool down a little bit. So you got to remember that as well. I know I uh, say this a bit, but whenever you use your hair dryer um, to dry off your picture, just wait a little bit before you paint because it will be the paper will be quite warm, and if you it'll throw off your uh, textures in your in your paint. Oh, sorry, your uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Your viscosity, your thicknesses, and consistency is probably the word I was looking for most. Um, yeah, it's going to work background to foreground. Got a little bit of lavender there, and uh, a fair bit of water, so we want to be quite watery. I'm just going to put in this, there's a, if you look closely, there's a distant hill that kind of runs down that way. Now I want this to be quite straight at the end here because it's, it is that crest of that driveway. And I am just, even though you can't see it too much, I'm going to continue that over here. You might not be able to see it much later on even, but. I just want it to be there anyway. Uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, that's cool. And there's a little bit of sort of darker stuff there as well which I'm just kind of getting from the palette. I don't. I just want it to be fairly neutral kind of colors. And they sort of act as little tr uh, shrubs and things, I suppose, but just bits, don't fill everything in. So one thing you can learn is to, to not, uh, not be too literal. Your paintings will increase immediately pretty much. I'm almost not paying too much attention to the to the reference now. Almost. I will right now because I'm gonna do the, the building. But um but yeah the rest of it's all looking okay. I can sort of use a bit of artistic license here and there. And let's start with the rooftops. I always kind of start with the top down, I suppose, because it means you don't have to um, worry about smudging everything. Right. This looks quite drastically orange at the moment, I know, but uh, it's just that underneath I will put another colour or two over the top, just in little spurts, just so it gets a bit of character. A little bit of burnt sienna, see what happens there. Yeah, not too bad. If anyone's got any questions, don't hesitate to Keeping yourself down here. No, I'm just joking, obviously. Um, yeah, ask away. Even if you're watching the replay of this, uh, ask questions in the uh, in the comments. I'll I'll track them down and I'll answer you. That's no problem. Uh, that's all good. Just want to lift a little bit of that out. It's just a bit strong. Yeah, that's cool. That's better. A bit more, a bit more painterly. Good old word. Love it. Cool. Now the side of these, the sides of these buildings. I'm not going to mess too, mess with too much. 
because I want that light. I don't want to lose any of that brightness. And that's where the, the light's coming from here. So I'm just sort of you know, feeling way through it. Put a couple of little bits in or whatever. That's fine. It's just to suggest a bit of texture and weathering on the old chateau. No, do. You honestly don't need much more than that. And that's all fine. Now, while this is all still damp, like the rooftops and things, I'm just going to go in and put these uh, sides in the, with the, the two ends of the building, basically. Um, Colour-wise, let's have a look. Should be okay from there. Pretty dark. Pretty dark, and then we can texture it up in a second. Mm -mm -mm. About there somewhere. So remember, these are old buildings. You don't want to um, mess with them too much. Like you don't want to make them pretty and neat and tidy. So, sort of the rougher the better with these kind of things. Right. Just putting little bits of different things that, you know, speak shadow really. And I'm, I'm not worried. I know they're like stepped roofs. You know, the pitches are the pit, pitches of the, the roofs. They've got the little steps like the pyramids and that on them, but don't worry about that too much. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just going to start putting in some little bits. So I like to kind of do that sort of thing and then just sort of weaken it off a little bit, if you know what I mean. Got to remember that building is up here as well, under through the, the gate. So you got to remember that. Da -da -da. Soft there. Yeah, it's nice. Cool. Happy with that. One last little measure. Just a bit of splashy washy. And I do need to put a definite line under the eaves. Yeah, cool. Hmm. All right, just having to think about where I'm heading to now with this one. Okay, cool. So uh, two kind of options here. Um, well, thinking about it, I probably only really have one, but that's okay. What I mean is so I could keep the arch pretty light and just add a few little embellishments, or I can push it the other way and just make it quite strong, which I think I will do. I will do that. Because I think it just look cooler. And... Uh, and I'm allowed to. I'm the boss. You can't tell me any other way. Other way. Um, let's have a look. 
I want to be quite strong. So I'm just sort of starting with the, the warmish kind of orangey color. It's a bit of, well, I mean, I don't know what color it is exactly. It's a bit of a bit of burnt sienna, a bit of stuff that's on the palette, a bit of transparent orange. Yeah, this is sort of quite fiddly for me. It's not usually my style of work, but I, I like it. I enjoy this kind of thing sometimes. Yeah, it's got these little tears on there. Now, while it's, we'll do all this stuff while it's damp so you get that melting in thing. You don't want, you don't want things to be so real static and boring. Like I always say, I guess, I mean, you might want boring paintings. So that's fine, I guess. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Not sure why you would, but that's okay. Different strokes and all that. That's a funny colour, isn't it? Just mute that down a bit with a bit of grey. And I'd best tissue that out before it goes a bit nuts on me. That's okay. What I do want, I'm just going to, I know this is sort of the top of the thing, but I'm just moving, like connecting that shape of, of the gate into the landscape itself. Just literally a couple of little lines here and there, and it just sits it down a bit and it doesn't, and it alleviates that whole sticker sort of look, the stuck on, cut out cut and paste thing which is horrible that sort of look let's have a look that's all good happy with that actually that's looking quite nice so far that might end up getting a glaze when it's dry we'll have to see how it holds up as it comes down yeah I'm going to do the path now the Party wathy right there. Party party. Alright. So I want some a little bit of softness here and there when I'm sort of whacking texture and things on the on the actual path. So I've just sort of wet down at the edges. Now careful not to go over there because we want that sort of pretty defined sort of edge along here and it kind of gives us a, a bit of a bit of that depth that we were looking for and as it comes up when it gets thinner obviously you follow your perspective that just little bits you know we've been quite subtle in all of these In a way, the the trees are kind of the star of the show. I guess if we're looking for a star of this show, it's yeah, it probably is the the trees. Bring that over a bit. All right, who's there? If you haven't said hello, say hello. I want to know who's there. Come on. Talk to me. Cool. Now, that's obviously a bit neat and tidy, so I'll splash a bit of water down there. Especially at the bottom here. Let that run out. It's good. Okay, cool. Yep, sweet. So it's all coming together. Um, I need to, the next part I want to do is this soft shadow, the soft light that's coming down from the trees. 
but I want it all soft. So in order to do that, this has to be dry. Otherwise we'll lose it all, of course. But just, just waiting a little bit because I think I want to just put a, a little stronger line there. Um, just a, a darker and a little bit thicker sort of mark here and there because it will dissipate and I want that mark to be there at the end. So you all constantly got to be sort of thinking ahead. And that line was just, it would be fine if it was on its own, but because there's a big shadow going to come across it, I don't want to run the risk of losing it. I want there still to be a defined edge to the path, if you know what I mean. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, a bit of texture is good. Not too much. Alrighty, I am just going to dry this off. How's the audio now? Like the, the sound of my lovely voice. <laughs> um, I just want to make sure it's okay. Because obviously I'll, I'll know when I watch this back how it is. But, um, but yeah, just curious. Cool, I'll just mute this while Adele plays a song. All right, paper's just going a bit nuts under the hair dryer there. I'll try and stick it back down. There you go. Obviously, um, people always ask about masking tape. What masking tape do you use? I mean, stuff I use is just fine, but, you know, the laws of physics, we can't really contend with glue versus heat. So, you know, it happens. And not to mention water. Um, all right, this shadow... So as you can see in the, the reference picture, it kind of um, kind of just sort of runs about there-ish. About there, yeah, about there. So I want to sort of wet everything down there so that we get some nice soft edges. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think the best way to do it. Just spray a little bit down there. I'll get a brush up here just so it gives us a little bit more control. You know, don't be slavish to it, but you kind of need to roughly know where you're going. Um, this shadow colour, I'm just... Um, Gonna make it quite cool, as I was saying before, so it gives us a nice neutral because it's gonna be over the top of that warmth. That edge there, for some reason, it's not soft enough, as is that one. Yeah, that's cool. 
and I'm just going to sort of keep bringing that down, cooling it down as it comes forward, cooling it down even more. Now, anything underneath here, because we're putting the shadow on, there's lots of paint, just be really careful not to ruin everything, so don't scrub it too much. Make sure you're using nice soft brushes for this sort of thing, so they don't scrub your underneath stuff away. It's getting there. It does need to be stronger, though. There's lots of water in here, so it'll dry off a lot lighter, this shadow, so I want it to hold up because I plan to go quite strong with the uh, what do you call it um, trees yeah, yeah, that's what they are I forgot that's cool yeah just looking back yeah that's cool just want to make that tiny bit darker over here Bit of neutral tint always helps just to darken it up without really affecting the color temperature too much. That's kind of what neutral tint's for, I suppose. I'm happy for that just to run and do its thing for a while. All right. These kind of trees and foliage and all that. Um, you kind of got to leave a fair bit of light through them, more than you probably think you need to. Um, but I think the way to do it is this kind of thing. I'll just show you. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, there is some warmth there, but. I'm just, I'm just going to start putting a couple of colours in. Might look like I've lost the plot right now, but don't worry. You may very well be right, but we'll see. Hopefully not. Just going in just with some water, just to soften up a couple of these edges. I don't really want anything um, running too much here yet. We'll put some different colouring in there soon. Darken things up. We just it's all still, you know, we've got the underneath warmth and a little bit of coolness over the top. That's all at the moment. Yeah, there's this funky blue, this Paris blue. It's got a bit of greeny to it, it's quite cool. Bit of purple. And you gotta remember, all of these colours sort of straight from the palette might look a bit drastic and a bit weird, but when they mix on the page, that's when you start getting the the magic happening. So don't think that because it's just a straight colour in your palette, it's gonna stay the same way when it's on the paper. It's going to mix and do all kinds of things. I'm just going to start bringing that down now. Yeah, all looks a bit funny, but bear with me, bear with me. It'll make sense eventually. I'll change brushes in a second too, so we can get a Few different brush marks. You kind of got to treat this sort of stuff as abstraction, really. So we've got a whole bunch of stuff here that's not abstract, abstract, but it's uh, it's a bit more literal. But we want 
you've got to have that juxtaposition, the yin and the yang and all that sort of hippy dippy crap. All right, neutral tint, let's go in there. Let's get some darks in. Because even though this is all abstract and it's working around, we don't want to overwork it and, and kill it. You know, it's still easy to do that. So I want to have some nice brushwork here and there still and nice fresh areas that are showing through. But remember, you don't have these shadows without these big darks. So you've got to you've still got to be true to what it is that you're doing. You still got to have all those fundamental elements, you know, lights and darks and you know. Can't just be boring masses. That's what I mean. Lots of warmth here now. Just going back over the top with some warmth just to see if we can get some real bright edges. Raw sienna, whatever. Little bits. It's a bit sort of more colourful than my usual work, which is a nice change, you know. Good as a holiday and all that shit. Now it's going all right, but I want to introduce just bits of water to, you know, using using watercolour and their and it and its intrinsic abilities and characteristics to indeed make it watercolor you don't want it to just be static and boring and if, if you like that sort of element of control that's cool but watercolor is not going to give you that I'm just lifting out a couple of little real heavy areas i really like that how that's happened that real light there shining through that real dark patch. I like that. Overall, pretty happy with how this is going. What do you reckon? It's a different kind of thing. I like it. I like it anyway. I need to charge me palette with some stuff. Now, I've just got a rigger here. That I'm just gonna put a couple of branches and whatnot. I don't want to tunnel it and and uh, have it all enclosed like it is on the reference, but uh, just wanted a few more little marks on this side. going to mute good old Adele and see uh, uh, mute the microphone and get Adele out again and see what we can come up with sweet
Sweet. Sweet. I really like this. I really like it. Oh, I really like it. But there's one thing, or well, there's a couple of things I need to, to do to tie it all together. And they, yeah, both pretty good, but it's all about the light. So now that this whole thing is working, this whole area is sort of coming together and working and this abstraction, spot on. Love that stuff. I want to darken the dark bits up here. So the shadow part, and I want to just glaze over the little gate there. Um, and this, uh, I'm not going to be scrubbing at it or anything. It's just a, a little, little bit of stuff just to darken things up and give them a, just a bit more strength on that side. I'm just going to make that up a bit there. Because his edge sits really neat against that skyline, I just wanted to sort of straighten it up. It was a bit curved. It's gone worse now. Go that kind of vibe. Yeah, it's strong, so I'm just tissuing it out to bring it back a little bit. That's it, it just gives it a bit more dimension. Yeah, cool, happy with that. Good stuff. All right, now this gate. I just want to go over with a bit of ultra. I'm gonna go over it and then just sort of tissue a bit of it out. And it just darkens it and um, just gives it a bit more presence up there without sort of taking over you don't want it to be too strong um a couple of highlights a few little bits of texture down here i want to work on just good yeah i see some of that got lost in the shadow but that's okay it's all fine So that edge there is sort of annoying. I was hoping it was going to be softer. So I'm just going to try and soften it up. Kind of scrub it a little bit. That's okay. Yeah, didn't do too much. That's okay. That's fine though. Happy with that. That's good. It's all kind of working together so I, I like that aspect of it all um i do need a couple of highlights definitely a couple of bits of white gouache here well it's actually white watercolor titanium white watercolor so a few little bits Try not to do too much of it. And it's just good to reclaim a couple of those little highlighty bits, those little tops of things, little edges here and there. It's good.
I'm just going to mute this again and uh, dry it off and take the tape off. I reckon it's pretty cool. Although, let's try. Don't know what it is, but that might work. I just spotted something I want to fix up. And it's just with pure neutral tint, just a little bit on the brush. I just want to darken these windows up here. Just give it a bit more presence. Cool. It's almost not worth it, but that's okay. Lovely. like doing this scene it's um it's a cool one because there's those different ways you can approach that uh those trees um i personally have found doing them this way where it's you know semi-abstract really <clears throat> it's moving away from the mic a bit so it might sound funny doing it with so it's you know abstract really the trees um, it's still, it's still interesting. It's not, it's not just, uh, you know, boring bunch of, you know, a million leaves and, you know, half a million branches and all that stuff. It's, it's everything there just in one sort of, you know, big mass. However, you can go wrong with these sort of things by, uh, there's a few ways you can overcomplicate it. Firstly, you can do too much of it. Uh, and you can color it all in, fill it all in. No, leave some gaps, leave gaps everywhere. If you have a look, there's, and it's obviously, if you want some depth, you, you need that variety. So make sure you've got enough gaps in there to, to let the light through. And, uh, and that shadow in the foreground where that's sort of being caused by the, the trees, um, it's pretty nice that once it dries off and settles down completely, I may end up glazing that again just to make it a bit stronger. It's just a little bit weak and uh, just a little bit weaker than I thought it was going to be. But um, yeah, I don't mind it. And remember, if anyone's listening, um, my demos like this are always for sale. So if you particularly particularly uh, like this picture um, and you want me to sign it and send it off to you in the mail, I'm happy to do that. It's $130 Australian. So first to write sold gets the chocolates. So let's have a look. All right. Whoa. Where are we? Let's go here. There you go. That's a bit better. You can see both. Um, 
So yeah, just let me know if you would wish to purchase this piece. Uh, no, no obligation whatsoever. I'm just, I'm just letting you know it's, it's there if you want. Um, thank you very much. And uh, I was going to do two pieces today, but honestly, I've just got too much on, and uh, and that's all okay. So this one is a, a good one. But I'm working on a new uh, YouTube video at the moment about uh, with three strategies to level up your watercolor game so it's uh, pretty cool um, so stay tuned for that um, enjoy my other videos so head over there don't don't get despondent head over watch all the other ones comment like leave thumbs up make sure you subscribe to the channel and all that sort of good stuff that feels really salesy and awkward oh. no thank you uh, I will see you guys very soon uh, does anyone have any questions before I skedaddle And all talk at once. All right, guys, thank you so much. No worries, Tammy, it's a pleasure. Uh, thank you for sticking around. And um, like I say, you can watch it on the replay at any time as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good day, Guinevere, and enjoy yourselves. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.